And the Lord visited Sarah when Abraham was out, as he had said, for he was at a loose end one day, and did fancy popping in for a coffee. And the Lord did say unto Sarah, as he had spoken, for it is not like the Lord to not deliver. And besides, it is well known that stopping off for a cup of coffee can lead to other things. 4. Sarah conceived, and bare Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time of which God had spoken to him. And taking the previous verse into account, it almost does sound as though the Lord had dipped a lot more than biscuits when he did visit Sarah. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah had bare to him, Isaac fourteen years after the birth of his first son, Ishmael, and those fourteen years will become important later on. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac, being eight days old, as God had commanded him, because, although God made man in his own image and perfect in every way, apart from the useless bits like men having nipples and the appendix, of course, though on basic design faults like an eye with a blind spot and an esophagus and a windpipe coming together in the pharynx so that man can accidentally choke to death on his own food, and man's inability to synthesize vitamin C, like all other plants and animals do, and wisdom teeth. The Lord had apparently decided that maybe foreskins weren't needed, after all. Either that, or he wanted to see just how far Abraham would go in a game of Simon Says, and how much he wanted the land that the Lord had given him. And Abraham was an hundred years old, when his son Isaac was born unto him, which is a point that seems to have been made here a little too often to be accidental. And Abraham was overjoyed, for now he did have someone else to blame for the bad smells when he didn't make it to the tree just outside his encampment on time. And Sarah said, God hath made me to laugh, so that all that here will laugh with me. For she was a miserable cow, having known her husband literally all her life, from the day that she was born. Of course, that's known in the literal sense, and not in the biblical one. Though this is the Bible, and there isn't exactly a law against it. And she said, Who would have said unto Abraham, aside from God, and the voice of God, and at least one of his angels, that Sarah would have given children suck? For I have borne him a son in his old age. And the child grew, and was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. But the child wasn't particularly interested in much of it, other than the jelly and ice cream. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the horrible, and the Egyptian, who she had borne unto Abraham, mocking, which, let's be honest, is the kind of thing that kids that age do. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, even though knocking up Hagar so that Abraham could have an heir was her idea, apparently, cast out this bondswoman and her son, for the son of this bondswoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight, because of his son, and he did make all sorts of excuses, and did promise Sarah a nice holiday, and give her flowers, and did point out that in the matriarchal society that they did live, his word was final, and that he was the boss. But at the day's endest, this twas only one way that this was going to go. And God said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad, and because of thy bondswoman. In all that Sarah hath said unto thee, hearken unto her voice, for thou art pussy-whipped. For in Isaac shall thy seed be called. And Abraham did say unto the Lord, Great be my thanks for thine support on the matter, for tis time such as these that I know as do my friends art. For the Lord did know us not to get involved in domestic matters, for it will only end badly, and by the look of the nasty lump upon Abraham's head, whence a large copper cooking pot had surely made contact, and though the Lord was all-powerful, never present and all-knowing, he did know us that Sarah did have a powerful right arm, and if he did get on the wrong side of her, he would be known. And he did continue. 
and also of the son of the bondswoman, will I make a nation, because he is thy seed. So thou dost not need to feel bad about firing her, for, like all fairy tales, this story shall surely all turn out all right in the end. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and took bread and a bottle of water, and Hagar's P-45, and gave it unto Hagar, putting it on her shoulder, and the child, who was by this time in his teens, and sent her away. And she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba, with a strapping young lad slung over her shoulder, and it was a very emotional scene. And Abraham did stand there waving for some time, as sorrowful music did drift across the dunes, and the scene did dissolve into darkness. And the water was spent in the bottle, and she cast the child under one of the shrubs, and he did sit there and sulk, as boys of that age do, and is asked his mother repeatedly if he could have an ice cream. And she went and sat her down over against him a good way off, as it were a bowshot, for she said, let me not see the death of the child, for if I have to listen to his incessant whining about all his friends having an ice cream, and how it is not fair that he is not able, I shall surely murder the little bastard. And she sat over against him, and lift up her voice, and wept. And God heard the voice of the lad, for it was quite difficult not to. And the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven, and said unto her, Willest thou tell us unto him to shutteth the fuck up? And Hagar did shrug, and the angel of God did ask, What aileth thee, Hagar? As the Lord, who knew everything, had not told him. Fear not, for God hath heard the voice of the lad where he is. Arise, lift up the lad, and hold him in thine hand, for I will make him a great nation. And she did think for a minute, and did look at her son, built like a brick shithouse, a youth in his mid-teens, and she did ask the angel if he was sure. And the angel did look at the piece of paper that the Lord had given him, and did call her over, and did point to what was written upon it. And both her and the angel did read it again, did look at the lad, and did look at one another, and shrug. And God opened her eyes, after she did pass out through strenuous exertion, while trying to lift her son into the air, with just one hand. And she saw a well of water, and she went and filled the bottle with water, and gave the lad drink, for he did look worn out from all that standing there. And God was with the lad, for he did like going drinking with the lads. And he grew, and dwelt in the wilderness, and became an archer. That being the kind with a bow and arrows, and not the kind that is a lime bastard who doth write shit books. And he dwelt in the wilderness of Paran. And his mother took him, a wife, out of the land of Egypt, having gone down there with a horse cart, a length of rope, a roll of duct tape, a cloth, and a bottle of chloroform. And it came to pass, at that time, that Herbimelech and Phicol, the chief captain of his host, spake unto Abraham, saying, God is with thee in all that thou doest, which presumably included being there on the morning to hold the roll of toilet paper, while Abraham did take a shit behind the palm tree on the edge of the camp. Now, therefore, swear unto me here by God that thou wilt not deal falsely with me as you had done at first whence thou did arrive in my lands, nor with my son, nor with my son's son, but according to the kindness that I have done unto thee, thou shalt do unto me, and to the land whereupon thou hast sojourned, and thou shalt continue not to mention my thing with the grannies. And Abraham, who by now we all know can be trusted about as far as thou canst throw Egypt, said, I will swear. And Abraham reproved her Bimelech, because of a well of water, which did look suspiciously a lot like the well of water that had suddenly appeared unto Hagar in the middle of the desert, which her Bimelech's servants had violently taken away, stealing the trees and leaving a big dry hole in the ground. And her Bimelech said, I wot not who hath done this thing, neither didst thou tell me, neither yet heard I of it, but to-day, for, like I hath said before in the previous chapter, a fuckest mind-reader I am not. 
And Abraham took sheep and oxen, and gave them unto her Bimelech. For he did have plenty, and there were spares left over, from the ones that her Bimelech had given him in the first place. And both of them made a covenant, though neither felt like it was necessary to cut the ends of their cocks off. And Abraham set seven ewe lambs of the flock by themselves, and did say unto them, You go over there. And her Bimelech said unto Abraham, What mean these seven ewe lambs, which thou hast set by themselves? Thinking at first that Abraham was getting all set to fire up his altar, so that they could have kebabs. And he said, For these seven ewe lambs shalt thou take out of my hand, that they may be a witness unto me, that I have digged this well, which didn't at all in any way sound like a bribe. Wherefore he called that place Beersheba, which means well of the oath, or seven wells, or even seven ewes, depending on how exactly you translate the absolutely unambiguous and precise original Hebrew in which this narrative was written because there they swear both of them, and the air was very blue. Thus they made a covenant at Beersheba, hence the name, or not. Then Herbimlech rose up, and Phicol, the chief captain of his host, and they returned into the land of the Philistines, which wasn't very far away, seen as, according to the last chapter, Abraham was camped right in the middle of it. And Abraham planted a grove in Beersheba, and called there on the name of the Lord the everlasting God, asking him, If her Bimelech had not taken his well, then who had? And Abraham sojourned in the Philistines' land many days. But he still didn't find his well, and he did send back a great many postcards, saying, Wish you were here, which is a sentiment that would be taken literally a few thousand years later by his descendants from all over the world. And far away, on the other side of the desert, in Paran, under a tree by a well, the Lord, dressed in nothing but a pair of nut-hugging speedos and fluorescent pink flip-flops, did sip on his pina colada as he did recline in his floating sun-chair, that did gently bob about upon the waters within his inflatable swimming pool, filled from the nearby well, and he did adjust his ray-bands and did work on his tan, and Hagar, dressed in his skimpy orange bikini, did swim gracefully in the waters beside him, and did say unto the Lord, This well, it doth look an awful lot like the one that Abraham did dig just a few weeks hence, and the Lord did remark also that it did indeed bear a striking resemblance, and Hagar did say that Abraham would be furious when he did find out. And after a while the Lord did point out that Abraham did have six other wells, and that he should be grateful that he did not live in centuries to come. For surely, when a man would, in time still far distant, abandon his wife, he would not get away with just giving her half a French breadstick and a bottle of Volvic, and booting her out of the door. And that there would be these people called lawyers, and that she would be able to hire one. And lo, as Abraham's wife, she would be entitled to half his tent and everything else he did own. And that Abraham would surely give her child support for young Ishmael. And that as an employee of Abraham, working as she did for Abraham's wife Sarah, as a handmaiden, given the way that she did fire her, she would surely have a valid claim for wrongful dismissal. And that she would be entitled to a great deal of severance pay and compensation. And Agar did ask the Lord why these things were not so now. And the Lord did say that he had not quite got round to it yet. And he did quietly say unto himself, Thou should treat thou fellow human with fairness, respect, and equality. And he did think that it did have a good ring to it also, as did the one about bearing false witness. But alas, he could not find his notepad. Thank you.